I am in Lucerne, Switzerland. And one of the more unique attractions in this old tourist city is the Bourbaki Panorama. Though the original structure now has a glass cube around it, the original panorama structure was built in 1889, and it was supposed to house a different panorama based on the Battle of Sempach, a 1386 battle in which the Swiss Confederacy beat the Austrians, but that panorama was never completed. So in 1889, the Bourbaki panorama was brought to Lucerne and has been displayed here ever since. Panoramas, also known as cycloramas, were very popular and served as major attractions back in the late 19th century. They are very large 360 degree paintings, usually with some three dimensional effects added, and most of the panoramas depicted famous battles. There are still a number of them across Europe and a few in America, like the Gettysburg and Atlanta cycloramas. So we're going to head upstairs to see the Bourbaki panorama. Alright, this is the Bourbaki panorama, a 360 degree immersive painting created in the late 1870s by the artist Edouard Castres, who actually witnessed and was a part of this scene as he was a medical volunteer with the French Army de l'Est. The panorama is 377 feet in length, completely hand painted. This scene is rather depressing. While most of the panoramas were exciting scenes of battles, this one basically shows the starvation and misery of the French Army de l'Est after they were defeated and retreated into Switzerland. General Charles Denis Bourbaki, the panorama's namesake, commanded the Army de l'Est during the Franco-Prussian War of 1870-1871, in which the Germans handily defeated the French. This scene takes place after Bourbaki and his army were defeated at the Battle of Lausanne on January 17, 1871. After that disastrous defeat, the dejected army went into Switzerland, of course because this nation was neutral during the conflict, so they basically sought self-internment here as they tried to reorganize and count their losses. 88,000 surviving members of the Army de l'Est entered Switzerland during that harsh winter. Here the wounded men were able to be treated by the Swiss Red Cross, as well as by local villagers. The Army de l'Est had to leave behind many important materials during their withdrawal to Switzerland. They had lost 285 pieces of artillery, over 7,000 rifles, and 11,000 horses. As mentioned, Edouard Castres, the primary artist of the panorama, saw these events firsthand. He was a Swiss Huguenot who helped the injured Frenchmen as a medical assistant when they came marching through his town that winter, and he went with them to their internment location. One thing I really like about some panoramas are the three-dimensional objects protruding from the painting. It is really well done with this one. They even have some wax figures of soldiers and nurses, and I believe it is all original to the panorama, which is pretty astounding. Probably the most impressive real piece protruding from the painting is a replica railroad car. In that scene, French General Justin Clinchant meets with Swiss General Hans Herzog. Despite the name, General Bourbaki is not depicted in here. After the defeat at Lausanne, he didn't want to suffer the humiliation of surrendering, so he gave up command of the army to General Clinchant, then shot himself in the head in a suicide attempt. But he survived. When they saw that, they stopped the coaches and told these gentlemen to get out and make room for the wounded. Don't the gentlemen need help getting out? Aren't you ashamed? This is a very impressive experience. It's like the predecessor to immersive art environments that were created in the 20th century and still immensely evolving into the 21st century. Really this painting of a tragic war scene, rather than a glorious war scene makes sense here in Switzerland. This panorama displays the horrible consequences of war on a grand scale, the sick and dying lie all over the place, and everything is miserable. This panorama, which was originally displayed in Geneva in 1881 before being moved here, was intended as a celebration of Swiss neutrality and a reminder of the horrors of war. Its message is quite similar to the Lion Monument, which is just a block away from the panorama.
cannon fire. The Prussians! The Prussians are coming! For Papa, it was the winter of the wolves. It was so cold that January of 1871 that the wolves came over the frozen doom right down to the villages. And when Papa told us the story that sits a page in the history books, the Franco-German war, victory for the Germans, battles close to the Swiss frontier, turned their eyes up and died. And the Bourbakis would cut a piece from the carcass to roast over a campfire. So many things that Papa remembered. One young soldier had lost a nut on the edge of the forest, throw themselves face down on their sledges, and shoot off at top speed. Whoa, whoa, an awful business. For us, it's a page in the history books. The Franco-German War, victory for the Germans, battles close to the Swiss frontier. But for Papa, the French rear guard was already fighting in the frontier. And the noise of the guns kept coming nearer over the mountains. On the level below the panorama rotunda, there is actually a window to see the base of the panorama and a close-up of one of the physical scenes set up against the painting. Here some nurses from the Red Cross are aiding the wounded French soldiers. These are some very old figures that seem to be in good condition. This is really cool to see up close. The panorama painting is actually smaller than it used to be. At one point it was cut down and lost a third of its height. So apparently there used to be more to it. Now I had thought that there was some sort of Franco-Prussian war exhibit down here, and I think that's what they used to have, but now it's something weird and not interesting. I think they should make this space about the Franco-Prussian war, or the history of panorama and cyclorama paintings as a phenomenon in the late 19th century. That would be cool. The modern part of this structure now has some shops and a cinema. I guess that allows for the survival of the panorama. So the Bourbaki panorama is a really fascinating piece of history. These panorama paintings are rather rare to find, so it's great to see one well preserved here in Lucerne. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did then please like it, share it, and subscribe to my channel. Also take a look at my other videos featuring historic attractions, museums, natural wonders, and more here in the Lucerne area, as well as across Europe and America. Thanks for watching!